everybody welcome everybody today on the chair i've got dr miranda again um so for you guys we had promised that we'll come back with a conversation around generational wealth and why yeah. she got involved in the property space so thank you for everybody that is following us for anybody who's new on this platform please subscribe uh, comment, give us feedback. We'd love to hear what you think of, of these conversations. So as I said, I've started a series for generational wealth. I'm going to be having these conversations with different people. I think it's for me more than anybody else, <laughs> but if there's <laughs> anybody who gains something out of it, I think it's, it, it's great. great. I just have a passion around the topic and I always look back and I'm like, Ish, if my father had left loads and loads of monies for us, you know, we wouldn't be working this hard. We would be somewhere else. But anyway, no, it, it is what it is. Um, I think now we want to live a better life for, for our kids and our kids' kids. And let's see what that looks like. Dr. Miranda, hi. hi Please introduce huh? yourself again. <laughs> introduce yourself again. <laughs> hey. Banani. Hello, Dumela. I am Dr. Miranda. I am Prop Doc Mom. Um, I run a mentorship, a property mentorship for beginners, and I call myself Prop Doc Mom. Um, I am, mm, and I'm a podcaster. So I'm a property podcaster. I'm a co host of Property Magicians Podcast, a free platform, your free library on property. And what else do I do? I mean, I am a property investor. That's why I'm prop doc mom. I am a doctor and health manager by day, and I'm a mom. Um, so many roles, but roles that link up and very important for me to hold all of them without being overwhelmed. Thank what you. else do you want to know? <laughs> no, 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 no. I think you've covered it. Prop doc mom, it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, mm. so Miranda, I think let's just get into it. And we've had mm. this conversation. You, you know, our conversations will take whichever direction because it's a conversation, you know? Yeah. Sure. Um, so, what is your definition of generational wealth? <clears throat> Let me start something that, that hurt me. That hurt okay. me. I, I won't go straight to your answer. I'll, I'll answer in a roundabout way. Um, one of um, my friends now, who is a property mentor, asked us when we attended a property master class and said, okay, Miranda, tell us what things in your home are named after your dad? And I was like, what things? What do you mean? Do you have a table? Do you have a headboard? Do you have a chair that, <clears throat> that was left by your dad? And I was like, no. And he said something like, do you know your great, great, great grandfather, five times removed, his name, his nickname? I was like, no, not actually. No, I don't. Very painful. And he's like, do you know why you don't remember his name or you don't know his name? It's because he left nothing, nothing wow. to be remembered by. And that's how we live. That's how we live. We, we come, we leave, and nothing is left. On the contrary, other people will have a name and they will tell you that um, my name is, is my great, great grandfathers uh, four times removed. And you know, this baseball bat, I was left by my great grandfather. You know, the piano that stands in my sitting room or my dining room was left by my great, great grandfather. Or, you know, the house that I lived in when I went to university was the apartment that my great grandfather had left my, my great, great grandfather and then when he went to university and we all decided it's okay, nobody's going to sell this and it was left to us. 
So Tina, besides the same that we carry through and the genes that you can't see with your naked eye, we do not build things, monuments. Umtanaga Oppenheim and Bume remembers the name of the person that started the business 100 years ago. Wow. Well, Ackerman of Pick and Pay, his great, great, great grandchildren will always have the Pick and Pay label. They'll be reminded by the packets that we hold. They'll be reminded by the houses they live in and the, the fact that they can go to certain schools and live at certain suburbs. What do we leave? That is my pain for me. And generational wealth to me means leave things that kids will remember. Surname is not just the only thing. The genes and the signature of my father, this is my father's nose I wear, is not the only thing that we leave. And the type of legacies that we leave. And wealth is many things. Wealth is really, really many, many things. I love music. I'm a, I'm a super nerd. I read. Yeah, that's the legacy my father left. What else? What more? Has he made it easier for the next generation to live and the next generation to live? And that's not what we, what we plan, right? As Black people, we, we struggle with that. We struggle with that. I hope I've answered your question. Yo, but you've answered you've <laughs> answered the question and it's 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 hit a nerve because when you when you when you say what is it in the house, it sounds simple, right? Yeah. What is it in the house that has yeah. that reminds you of that particular person? Yeah. And if you can look around and there's nothing, it's like they are forgotten, right? It, which and and that for me is like wow and yeah. and it takes me back and it's sad because my dad my dad loved music like yeah. loved music exactly and he, he used to buy records those vinyls, I'm a LP I'm a LP <laughs> and stacks and stacks and stacks and he used to write Miranda he had a line that said this is the property for my kids and their generation yeah. That's what my dad used to write. Yeah. My dad passes on my brother. He's the in child. When friends come, they play these things and they, and they go take with them, them away. Yeah. That's how now, now if you can find anything, maybe there are two or three of those. We had like like a stack of Elvis Presley records, stack yeah. of Benton, and things yeah. that you can't find now. Now, you know what I mean? Exactly. That's and what it I'm saying. And I think that's what it's triggered. What you've just said has triggered that sadness. Oh, of no. Now there's the, those, that thing, and he paid so much of money. Can you imagine For if those. we had to auction those things now? Yeah. Wow. My father was the no. same. My father was the same. I I listen to music and, and, and our mom tells us all the time with my sister that it's such a surprise that you guys didn't like practically grow up with your dad. He, he left very early uh, from your lives, but you listen to his music. Do you know that? And I remember, um, who do I remember? Um, I remember woman to woman. Who was okay. that? Yeah, um, and I remember Shelly Bassi. I remember Elvis Presley as well, right? He used to listen to that. I know the whole album of Roots because my dad used yeah. to listen to music. But all his music is left all over the place uh, with girlfriends, with friends that he became friends for two minutes and then they left his life. And, 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 and sadly, even his house, even the house that I grew up in, the first house that, that I lived with my parents in, is a disputed house. And that for me is a problem in that if we do not do estate planning as we live and decide that whatever we acquire, it is something that we want to live for our kids, just to make the next generation a little easier. He knew what he came from. Why didn't he think of making it easier for us for the next generation? What about yeah. Newo 
that he never is never going to meet physically in the physical in the physical realm did he want her to be better so you you know when 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 our property mentor asked us that in the master class it made me think actually starting a property investment journey is is not even about me it's just i want to show our kids what it looks like when you leverage the profession to leave something that they can live on because my mpchb is not going to feed anyone when i'm gone yeah. my mpchb is my degree and it's just a, it's my job it's a career that that is chosen it's got nothing to do with you it's got nothing to do and what can i do with the mpchb i can only leverage the salary that a medical doctor can can earn but i can leave other things that make their physical existence better and when we see things that way then we know how to build generational wealth you can't be here and be big and be dr smang mang and think you've done it you know that's that's that that's not that's not what generational wealth means and generational wealth means with their doctorate what did you do whose life did you impact oh yeah of course mbhp you've healed some people maybe you've made some mistakes in some places and i have applied my medical degree differently but i it's i can never leave it to now she doesn't even yeah. want to be a doctor thankfully so it's good right but how you leverage that profession so that the legacy that lives on afterwards is something that makes nero's life better and when i say nero's life better i mean so i leave her something so that she doesn't start like i did and she mustn't start with oh my god how much is accommodation at university possibly start with an apartment that is paid for she doesn't have to pay the 16000 20000 for accommodation at university possibly she starts and she can choose her career not because she's choosing a career to make sure that her mother uh, has got some subsistence from her she just picks a career she picks and she's like okay i'm going to do gaming oh okay i'm going to do minecraft i don't know what they do now yeah. um oh i'm going <laughs> just to pick a career because tina well, how did we pick our careers bubume you needed to pick something so that you can work backwards yeah yeah and go in and, and and pay some sort of black tax who yeah. are you going and- to help well you our kids need to pick a career because it fits their personality it fits the times that they are in we are in digital spaces now and and then if i'm lucky she's like oh yeah mama you never drove a tesla and she wants to buy me a tesla maybe maybe okay yeah. that's fine but yeah. it mustn't be a prerequisite you know i hear people talk about how they you know i i feel like a deputy parent because i'm the first born i don't know whether you should wear that as a man as 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 as, 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 as an award as a yeah. crown i i i don't think it's fair on kids we are reversing things that nature didn't set up that way you can't be a parent and then reverse and become a child again we shouldn't yeah. we shouldn't yeah. right i yeah. think we are messing up with nature have you seen lions the mama lion is the one that catches the kid yeah and then he, she retreats and then the babies eat and the male lion eats and it's been like that generational they don't change the order because when you yeah. mess up with the order i think we are messing up and that's why generations don't proceed deputy parenting does not build generational wealth it impoverishes the first child the, f- the first born child or the child that becomes the deputy parent whichever order they are in yeah. um black tax does not bear generational wealth you are forever resentful because when your money goes backwards backwards to mama to auntie to cousins to little siblings to to whatever we can never get ahead not writing wills can never ever 
breed generational wealth because it leaves relationships that are messed up. You know, I don't know. I, I don't have the answers, but I, I feel like I'm starting something that's new that for at least one single person in my family, I may make it better so that Neo doesn't feel obliged to become a deputy parent to me. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, yo, yeah, I know you've <laughs> taken me to another space. <laughs> and it it's hurts. real, right? It, it is me. real. It is real mm. because as as the elders, do you you assume you assume the responsibility? Yeah. And 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 in some families, and and I think in some families there's appreciation of that you've taken on stuff that was yeah. in yours and there's appreciation yeah. and yeah. in some families there's no appreciation in some families no. you will get reminded which we didn't ask you like why are you making this now an issue we didn't we no. never asked no. but but somehow we were conditioned that once one parent passes mm -hmm. on or both parents are not there you just need to assume the responsibility with that without yeah. anybody asking you to. Yeah. And when then your siblings are not appreciating you, you have a tantrum, you have moments of, and <laughs> they are right. They never They're asked. Right. Yeah, they never asked. They never asked, but not only that, um, there is a general nuance amongst families, a, a nuanced thing. Hey, they will say, oh, umpume, She's done mm -hmm. so well. Oh, my brother's child. Look at what they built for their mom. So in that, in that nuance, we, we, we also take it, we take it upon ourselves to say, oh, this is how I get a, 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 an award from my family. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I must be doing this. I must be doing something right. And when it is said by older people, your favorite aunt, your grandmother, you really, really think it is the right thing to do. Yeah. And just because it's been done like that generationally does not mean we need to carry it forth and keep doing it that way. It really, really, there's nothing special about that. It can never build generational wealth. That means that child who's a deputy parent they continue to support the family. And then you become the go-to person now. And that means any money, any extra money, which you could be building a legacy, a property, you can't save it. Or something breaks at home. You are perpetually the person that fixes that visa. You are the perpetual person that fixes. And we really need to build something where people become independent of you so that you can also carry forth because you've got children and children need their own legacies because those people are not gonna share with them by the way, when they progress. Yeah. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very painful conversation to have with especially brown people. And me and I'm deliberate about it that I am going to have that conversation. My father's house yeah. is in dispute as we speak. There was never mm. anything written. There was some money exchanged between cousins. But I don't know if, <clears throat> I don't know if, I don't know whether that house is still, still belongs to us who were in the permit or not. But we can't go to that house. We can't go to that house. We don't own that house. And what I see is that I've got little nephews and nieces. I know what I could do with that house. And I know the gift that I could give them to say, here lies your father. When we were driving, I, I told you that we went to your part of town in case it came yeah. because we had a long, long drive with Neo. She wanted to know about my dad. So we had long conversations about my father. We had long conversation about where he lived. And she says, but I've never been where he lived. Nothing to show. Yeah nothing to show wow. she likes big words she likes using big big words and i laugh because that's 
that's my father there. And I was like that. We love words. She'll open books just to find a big word so that she can say it. And she knows how to say it. She doesn't care whether she knows the meaning or not. She'll just say it, you know, because I remember when she was four, she would say architecture, architecture. Because she loves, and that's my dad right there. I wish there were other things, you know, follow up things that I could show her that say, and that's your grandfather, my child. So it's a very painful thing. And I've decided instead of complaining, instead of being bitter, instead of I'm going to do something about it. Me. Yeah? yeah. Even if yeah. I leave one apartment that is paid up that says, this my mother left to me whether she messes it up one day herself but she will have something that her mother left her because i can't leave her the mpchp that doesn't mean anything to her 20 years yeah. from now it will not be anything and in any case medicine is changing the world is changing it's not going to remain the only noble profession it was 20 years ago right yeah, it was. Right now, we are butting heads with TikTok and Instagram because everybody has become a medical professional. Yeah. Every wow. knows, everyone knows about the vaccine. Everyone knows that, Tina, we, are, we, 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 we peddle drugs because pharmaceuticals, you know, that the world is changing. So, you know, we need to wake up. Yeah. We need to wake up. Yeah. But, but, Miranda, where do we start? And I remember in our pre previous conversation, we had a big moment about the, the, the banks that offered us debt and we, we went on, on like a rant about some of those things. Like, like now, we, now we realize, right? Now we realize that some of the things that get offered as you come out of university, it's credit cards, it's overdraft, it's all these things. We can't keep on complaining. Like some of us fell into that. How do we then teach the teach. upcoming professionals to say, this is not the route to go? Like what are yeah. those first, you know? Yeah, I like, I, li I like the question because I am, oh my God, I love the question. I love the question. I'll tell you what I have decided. I have decided that um, being a doctor is just another business. Okay. And then when you have decided that your career is just another business that you are going to use to buy assets, then you see it as a business, then you can build other businesses and other business. Remember, Mbume, when you become an accountant and you become a lawyer, you become a doctor, that was the end and be all. The profession was meant to make you rich, yeah. which disappointingly, it doesn't. And then it keeps you shackled because also you are confused that I can't be a doctor and be selling tomatoes. Yeah. So my first step, my first step at, 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 at solving this issue is, don't worry, my friend, the degree just gives you one business, but we are looking okay. for seven streams of income. Okay. So I think that's the first thing that we need to do. Your degree gives you your first business where you are going to generate money so that you can give birth to business number two, then business number three and business number four. Business number two could be, yes, you, you may start at a higher level where you've got share options. Ah, now you learn about shares. Oh, shares do actually build wealth and buy more index into index funds, buy some more stocks or whatever, right? Or start buying real estate. The third thing that we can do getting into this business now that you are this wonderful doctor, uh, remember, Tina, we, we have got this higher profession. Most the rest of you are nothing, right? We have got this <laughs> higher profession. Ooh, right. you, you, are the the thing, you are the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, no, 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 no. Tina, we come with a complex out of medical school. Mm -hmm. So now the, the MPSHB has given you business number one. But... Instead of using the MPSHB to go to the first posh suburb to live in, how about you buy a property? You don't buy the, the, the dream property. 
because I me mean, now I'll talk about property. That's what I love. I love. Yeah. I, I've got index funds, but I love property. So, how about you buy a property with investment in mind? That means I buy into a property. Maybe there are other younger doctors who can live in my property, can share the property, and I'm house hacking right from the get go. I don't have babies. All we used to do is work, 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 sleep a lot, party a lot, buy the next car. Even yeah. the car that you buy, don't buy the doctor's car, guys, because no, there's nothing GTI. like that. <laughs> back in the day, back in my day when doctors started, they needed to have a GTI. Oh yeah, Vurpang. Let's just Vurpang. start. Oh no, the, it was the it was the GTI big bumper in my time because you know I'm a, I'm a '90s graduate, so it was the big bumper Golf too. It was awesome. I did drive a red GTI myself, and I wish someone had told me not to do that. Right, so it was the GTI, and I yeah. So not to buy the doctor's car because the truth is most of brown people cannot afford those cars that's yeah. the truth the bank the bank makes it look like you can afford because they give you debt that you can't afford yeah so there are several places to start as you can see don't buy the doctor's car buy the basic car that car that takes you to and from the hospital because anyway you are in the hospital most of the time yeah. and the house that you buy no there's nothing like a doctor's house. You can afford it. So buy a house where you can actually house hack and have another young doctor share with you. You don't have babies. Uh, you are partying hard and whatever. And that's the way to get ahead. So there are several ways to do to 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 to, to begin, as you can see when I when when I'm Bume. And the salaries that we get, the truth is that they are not enough for the shiny stuff that we buy. So let's wow. buy, yeah. And your first house shouldn't be your dream house. It can't be. Just yeah. buy an but, enough dwelling space. But how, how do we get out of that mentality though? Because some of it is just, it's just the mentality of, I've, <laughs> I've studied this long, I need to be seen that, um, I'm, that's how we, I define my success. And I need to be seen that I'm, I'm making it in life. And my mother has to be telling all the neighbors that, yo, my child, my child is making it. And the neighbors need to see Miranda. Yo, the neighbors have to see that we you know. I, I know, I, I know what you mean. Um, I think you and I are uh, beginning to do that. This podcast, this very episode is the beginning. We need to tell the truth. I'm telling you the truth about the salary that doctors get, especially if they stay at the hospital and they, they, are, they are specializing. The truth is they can't afford the shiny stuff that you see, right? Yeah. Number two, to tell the truth that the profession is just a, a shekel. Unless you see it as a business to to to. to to, to give birth to other businesses, then you will know that that is not that is not it 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 is not the end and be all. The third thing is fourth quadrant. When I am a doctor and I work at the hospital, I'm an employee. If I open a practice, I'm self-employed, and that self-employment can be forever. You will live in that practice forever. Because mm. people come to Miranda, they don't come to the practice. They come to Miranda unless you build it as a business where it's going to have franchises of Prop Doc Mom, then it yeah. becomes. So I think our elders did us a disservice. The older doctors that I came after did me a disservice. They didn't understand that they are self-employed, but they are forever employed by those practices. Econa yeah. House, yes, it's always your yeah, practice that is forever full and people are coming and when you are not there it's like ah dr miranda is not there okay i'll come tomorrow when she's here it's just unhealthy you yeah. cannot be seeing patients seven days a week up to 7 p.m at night and think you are running a business it's not yeah. it really isn't 
So I think the first thing that we need to do, at least us, this generation, can we tell the truth? Yeah. No, and, and we, I like that. And, and hence, we're all being vulnerable about mistakes yeah. that we've made. We're yeah. being vulnerable about maybe if we, and, and Mina, I keep saying, if I were to live my life again, yeah. um, the, the, the money conversation would be different, you know? Yeah. And, know. and the thing is, we didn't know what we didn't know. And, yeah. and maybe even our parents didn't know what they didn't know, right? They didn't. So portioning blame is either here or here right now. Yeah. And, yeah. and it becomes a question of, so if we are passionate about changing things, what are those small steps that we yeah. can just take to yeah. start, you know? Yeah. And and yeah. you had a post. Now it's just it's just thing. It you had a post yeah. on Facebook yeah. that spoke about issues around family homes. Yo, <laughs> it family makes homes. me goosebumps because <laughs> because it's it's a conversation that I've had with a few people, and it's a conversation where I've said I've said what is the sentimental value that comes with the home. When your mother and father have passed on, why is that home still there if it's standing empty? Yeah. That's where my brain goes. Like, why is it still there if it's standing empty? And, and I go, but what <laughs> can we do to create wealth out of this home, home. and not be sentimental about it? Can we have that discussion? Your, uh, uh, can we have that discussion? Mina, there are three family homes in my family and everyone knows I don't care for family home because I have not seen what a family home really does for who, except one that my grandmother left. And she was very clear on her will. She left it to a boy cousin and the boy cousin has done something about it, right? Mm -hmm. But it was still disputed as if, he had put himself in the wheel. But at the time, we were all married and we were all in our homes. The girl, the girls. So he was left with that. And even the way we have these conversations that, no, the girls are married and the assumption that the men are going to buy our houses. They are going to buy us houses. You know, it's all the lying. It's really, really how we position these conversations. We give our girls the false promise that the husbands are going to buy the houses. If they do, you're lucky, that's great. But the two of you are going to probably buy a house, most likely, or yeah. you're going to end up with some guy who you are paying a bond for. We need to tell the truth about everything in Bume. And <laughs> you know, we really, I, I think the first thing that black people need to do is Tell the truth. Abo Mama, they need to tell the truth. I mean, I've got friends who are stuck, who are 44. They assumed that that husband is going to buy a home. They still refuse to buy their own homes. And like, but Miranda, when a guy approaches you and finds you with your own house already, you are unreachable, you are unlovable, you are too much, you are, it's all part of telling the truth. Can we tell the truth about what life is? These men come struggling to us as well, right? And I'm not yeah. making small of them. I'm just saying the truth is if you come into a partnership and you both have a little bit of a two-bedroom house and a two -bed, another two-bedroom house, there's leverage in these two properties. Maybe you can find a bigger, but don't come in already thinking, when you are going to be a dependent or I, I don't know, guys, you know, yeah. I'm, and, and, and I know that I'm too much for most black, black people when I say that and they, in my family, they know I, I, I really don't have, I, I don't even have the decorum. I don't decorate the, 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 the language about it. I'm like, I forget about the family home. No one is going, I mean, I don't want to go back to to living in the house that my mom lives in right now. I don't miss my bedroom. I've got my own bedroom in my own house. So don't come to me with that family home mentality. And when I hear it from a 27 year old, it breaks my heart. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. When my mother passed, 
she's she's unsentimental about things like that. So please let's not get sentimental. It's just it yeah. doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And you cannot be rich and be holding on to things that traditionally you've seen in our family. They repeat themselves. They repeat yeah. in that they don't form generational wealth. Don't wish for wealth when you're not doing things that do not move you towards wealth. That's all. Yeah. What, it, what yeah. is the step that you're taking towards it, right? What is the exactly. action? Because yeah. we can all have dreams, but if we are not actioning, it really doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Can we do so, that? So, yeah. Mm. So, but what can we do? Okay. Let's say somebody's listening to us and they've got this family home drama right now. It's not like, anyway, I'm going to have a disclaimer here. We're not, we're not giving financial advice. <laughs> This is part of our experiences, it right? Is. It is. It's part of our experiences. It's part of conversations that we are quite passionate about. And we might find that it can just help somebody out there. Yeah. So let's say there's a family that's going through this. And there's yeah. a home that is standing empty. Yeah. Or may, yeah, like, yeah, like what happens? Yeah. Like what's oh, supposed love- to happen? Because- I just love the advantage that we have as, as, as Black people as well. Here is, here is an easy, easy one. So you've got a house a house that's, that's standing empty. It's a three-bedroom house. Your parents proudly, you know, when they retired, they put in big windows and a red stoop and a bathroom for the first time. You know? So, Tina, we've got an advantage that we, because we grew up in small spaces, we know how to share small spaces. Someone is looking for a room and a yeah. kitchen to cook up in. Yeah. And Nabo, they've never had a bathroom a inside. Three people, three tenants can live in that house in each one of the bedrooms. And that strategy is called house hacking. Suddenly, this house, instead of standing there as a three-bedroom house, it gets 2,000, 2,000, 2,000 rents from tenants who are sharing the space boom, you've got 6,000. Suddenly, there's that one child who goes to a school in the family that you can help with 2,000 and the rest of you have got some disposable income that you never had. Or no. you decide the 6,000, we're saving, saving, saving. We're going to build two other units outside so that some new graduate down the road is starting to say, you know, can, 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 um, <clears throat> can become a tenant in this one unit with a bathroom or whatever. Suddenly you've got a, another 2,800 that you are collecting from that person. Now, wow. suddenly you have got a multi let I've told you about two strategies, just like that, without doing any anything, right? Just like that, you've got a multi let you are multi-tenanting. Suddenly this house that your mom and dad left you you can speak about it. It's like they are giving you money from the grave. How about that? We, spoke, we speak about ancestors. We, we, we pretend that we honor them. We pretend that we, but what we are looking for is they must come in our dreams and give us lotto numbers. They've already left you actually a lotto. An asset. A, an asset, a paid up house. Thirdly, yeah. that same, same house. When, I, when, I, when I'm Bume, you get um, a real estate agent to come and evaluate it, or you go on the deeds office, wind deed or light house, a light stone, and go and look at how much houses on that street are being sold for, and yours has been improved. Suddenly, oh, this house is worth 400000 I never knew that. You can all form a trust. Let's say you are three siblings because you can't go and own the house on your own. You, you build a trust and call it Moloto Trust, right? And the trust goes and refinances this house and get the 400,000 out of that house. And you build units on the side in that same house. Three strategies, three. Wow. Or you go and buy a separate house somewhere else and and, 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 and make it beautiful and somebody else rents it out or you sell it or whatever. Three strategies, guys. Three, house hacking, multi-let, refinance, 
refinance to buy another property or to improve this one or to add units to this very one. And like I say, this is the only time where we have got, um, where we are advantaged above white people. They really don't like things that are squashed together and people squashed together and whatever. This is the only time a township property printer can, 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 can make some money because that's not how townhouses are built. You understand? Yeah. Tina, we yeah. don't mind these small spaces and we, we, we grew up in them and it's part of the character of a township. Whether it's right or wrong, you and I have got big houses, we like space now, but the truth is you grew up in that four bedroom house, you knew how to share. There are people yeah. who are still like that, so you will always have tenants. So let's take advantage of these places instead of complaining. Let's yeah. take advantage of these places instead of buying Lama Town House uh, with their homeowners associations that are crazy. So there you are, you've employed three strategies, you are building a legacy. When Nero asks me and says, so where's my father's, my grandfather's house? I drive with her and I'm like, that's your grandfather's house. In fact, you know that PlayStation that you want, the rental that comes to me because I have to share it with Mama Dumio and for the next three months, that's where your PlayStation is gonna come. Wouldn't that make a difference to the child? Yeah. Isn't that, generational and legacy that we really, really, really want to talk about. When my niece, who is 19, gets her license and we say, your rental from unit number one, we're going to save it for the next 11 months. That's what. That's how we're going to deposit your Kia Picanto. Wouldn't that make a difference? My grandfather's yeah. house was the one that deposited my car. Wow. Assets must buy the shiny stuff, guys. The assets must buy the shiny car. Not the other way around or the confusion of, hey, the boys are going to buy us cars. Because already this 19-year-old who comes and says the rental from that unit bought my car, she starts seeing how assets work. Yeah. She doesn't walk into a relay. And no guy is going to say, I bought you a car. When we save the next year for the next 10 months, because in December, we want to take them to Drakensberg. And we say the rental from grandpa's house is the one that brought us to, to Drakensberg. Yeah. This yeah. holiday was bought on the rental. Assets by the holidays. That's yeah. how our children need to be. That's those are the conversations. That's the true conversation. Not, oh, Mina, my aunt is a doctor. She took us on holiday because she makes so much money. It's not even true, guys. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I think, I think, and the, the conversation must start early. As I said, the 19-year-old gets to know where her car was bought from. The 11 year old knows where the station came the, 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 the PlayStation yeah. came from. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. I mean, we, we've got new conversations to have, guys. We really Hence, we're having to... this one. I never <laughs> had this one, right? Like, like, by the time these conversations were happening, Miranda, and I remember I had an uncle who had, um, my uncle had taxes, my uncle had um, yeah. um, rental property. <clears throat> But by the time I think I had some of these conversations with him, some of the things were, were kind of falling apart, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and by that time, I, I also had so much of that, you I know? Do. So, so there wasn't a way of actually rescuing him or helping him out with some of those things at that point. And I always sit back and I go, I know, it, it, and, and I think my thing is that it's never too late. Yeah, it's, it's never it's too late. As long mm -hmm. as you're still waking up and breathing, it's never too late. Yeah. And it's not like now we're claiming like we've ma we've made it. We're only starting out. Like we're you starting, and I. Yeah, we're, only we're starting, starting now. We're starting now. And then, you know, now that I've spoken about townhouses 
and and houses in townships where you can refinance Pume. It just triggered something that a friend of mine, when I was in the Middle East, got married while we were there. And how impressive it was. I wasn't thinking about property at the time. And he said, you know, my, my grandmother in Bulawayo is the one that has paid for the venue and all the food. And I'm like, how? Your grandmother, she's like, yeah, she's in the rural areas, but she's got a piece of land, which is a hectare. And she, she plants ground peanuts. And she would cross over from Zim to Francis Town to go and sell the peanuts and it paid for oh his wedding. God. Oh, wow. Land, your heritage, land. It bought the shiny wedding. That's how his wedding was organized. And, and he was working right in the Middle East. But the grandmother mm. was like, uh -uh, this is my favorite little boy who's getting married. So you can finance all sorts of things. I think of another business of one of your homeboys. I don't know if you know about livestock wealth. Yeah, Ooh, the cow, the guy who oh, invested in cows. Shezi, like he wiped the floor with us guys. Mina, I was there when he won the 80,000 Yemeri Lind. Today, his business is a hundred million and it's, it's hardly 10 years, right? And he says, he remembers when he went to UCT. His father had cows and he sold three cows so that Dutuko could get a bus ticket to pay the deposit at UCT. Fortunately for him, he found a scholarship. He, he studied electrical engineering. I remember that so well. He told that yeah. story at the JSE when I went and bought my first cow from Livestock Wells. Yeah. And he says, you know, when I was struggling and sitting in these accounting firms, I can't remember which one, he worked for one of the big four. And wow. he was a business analyst. He remembered that, you know, actually my education was paid on land and cattle farming. Start where you are. Start yeah. with the family house. Start with a piece of land. Yeah, you come from a beautiful part of town and you probably are not even thinking about that because you haven't seen that piece of land in that way. That piece yeah. of land, if you are in Johannesburg or you are in Centurion and you can't go and plow anything on it, somebody's looking for it. You can lease it out and start any lease money. And when you lease to someone who's farming, who's going to be doing different crops at different re mm -hmm. a a seasons, you don't go and lease it for one year, Bume. You do about five year and 10 year because that gives that person a business plan. Oh, to, yeah. to plan their crop because in to 2021, crop, yeah. hey, hey, in 2021 right now, they are planting spinach and potatoes. She's going to 10 potatoes in January. It's not going to be what they plant. And they may start doing avocado and macadamia and almond, uh, almond nuts. And those take about five take years. Longer. Yeah. Exactly. So you've got a longer lease on that land and the land is rich and have a plan of in that ten, in 10 years time, do they leave their trees there or how do you, how, and it will, it will be worth much more because it will be a farm. It won't be a piece of land. Oh, wow. Wow. Guys, we, and, and you, oh no, what do I, what, what do I have, Mina, a, uh, some, person who comes from rural areas, people who come from rural areas are productive than that, right? So, and I mean, we are SOA to guys. So, you know, uh, to, own a, to you know, own a cow, I had to buy it from Dutugo and e Livestock Wealth would take care of my car. So I'm, I'm worried about the conversations that we have. We all want to come to Joburg. We all want to buy a townhouse in Johannesburg. We all want to pay the homeowners association fees and we've left wealth behind us. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we are starting today though. So <laughs> this has been a wild, this has been a wealth of information. So we're starting yeah. today. So somebody's yeah. hearing this today and yeah. you've triggered, you've triggered thoughts of saying, oh my God, we've got that piece of land that because you know what sometimes we do? 
you're thinking you need, you need to do something way now on that land. And then you're thinking, but I don't have the resources. I don't have yeah. the capacity. I don't yeah. have the money to start. Yeah. So we get stuck. stuck. The minute now you're stuck, but now you've given us another strategy. How about you lease the land? How about wow. you lease the land? How about you lease the land? I don't know if, yeah. So in Property Magicians, we actually had a podcast, a rich podcast about that. One Zimbabwean lady, what's an I? She lives in Italy. When she bought a piece of land in Zimbabwe, she didn't know that the aloe vera would become the aloe vera that it has become. Um, <clears throat> so they bought the land. They were a young couple, married couple at the time, and they planted aloes around the perimeter of the farm because they didn't have money to erect a fence. fence Lo yeah. and behold, today aloe vera is a thing. It's a super wow. drug. It's yeah. a super ingredient for all sorts of medicinal exactly. uses. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's a thing, thing, like it's big. So I'm just saying also, Tina, we've got so many, so many little things that we can we can employ and we can use. And hence Prop Doc Mom exists. I, I tell my beginner ment my mentees that. I'm going to start you where you are. I've got a young gentleman who works at a supermarket. His salary, his salary is super low. But there's a strategy for everybody. And he can't sit there and wish he was a doctor. He, he, really, he already is not. So must he not do property because you and I can speak English of capital? No, there's a strategy for him too. Right, there is episode 25. Yagama Josephine, she is a domestic worker, she runs a student accommodation because she's a mama bear. There's a strategy for everyone in property. Right, there is yeah. a young chick who is 28 in episode 89 or something like that. Utandega, she, she runs an Airbnb in, 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 in Mabone, but she's vibrant, she's got energy, and she knows. She knows her type of people who go to Maboning and then they have too many cocktails and then they can't drive and then they are going to need her, her, her bachelor flag and they hire her bachelor flag. Boom, there's money there. Do I need to buy the flat? No. No. I can rent to rent the flat and put it on Airbnb as long as I have written it down with the landlord and I start doing that. So there's a strategy for a 19 year old there's a star oh did i talk about a strategy for 19 year olds no you didn't <laughs> a property okay. strategy yeah i'm interested in this the teenager. there is a teenager what can she do oh let me tell you i am a so I, I i went into real estate and i discovered that there are so many little pieces of real estate i still don't understand so i went and registered as a as a, a real estate agent so i am with an agency i'm not a very good agent i'm i'm supposed to sell so many properties but yeah well i've got a job so so um in the class where you do training for real estate agents, there's a couple, they are 76 and 70. There's me, I'm 50 plus. There's a 20 year old and there's a 35 year old. So real estate agent sells a house. Let's say they sell a house for 3.5 million already. There you are with a commission of 109,000 that you never had. Okay, yeah. you can start there. And to become a real estate agent is essentially almost free because all you need is to register with the EAAB, the Estate Agency Board, and board, yeah. um, you pay a nominal fee to get a number. And you've got a principal who's going to train you and take you through the motions. And you, that's how you become a real estate agent. Another way is, you know, teenagers walk most of their time because they don't have cars or at least the teenagers that we were. So if you find an old dilapidated house and bring it to an agent, you can become, we call them people who are runners. You find the properties. Oh. You just find properties. Find properties. You find a piece of land. You've 
you've grown up in this street, you've seen this piece of land, it's been standing there for 20 years, it belongs to no one, or you think it belongs to no one, you take it to someone, to a principal of an estate agency and say, I, I know this piece of land, it's not owned by anyone, or the grandmother in this house died uh, 17 years ago and that house is falling apart and you bring it to someone, you can get a sourcing fee for that. Oh, wow. Sourcing fee also is not any set number. But when you are a teenager and somebody gives you 4,000 for sourcing a house that's worth 200,000, there you are, you've got airtime, you've got a pair of turkeys and you are out of our hair. You know, you don't ask yeah. for pocket money. So there, there's a strategy for everybody at every level, at every type of property, at every, like at everything, guys. The piece of land, one of my mentees right now, she is in her probably late 30s. Instead of buying a dream house, she's bought a house on a plot because it came with a, with a farmhouse with four bedrooms, two en suite, but it has got three cottages. What has she done? She's put up a perimeter wall, put two separate gates so that she goes in on one gate, her tenants in the three cottages. Boom, bought it for 1.5 million. She's wow. house hacking on a high end plot, four bedroom house that she's going to modernize to make it what would have been a four bedroom house at Bryanston, right? Yeah. Or at, yeah. at Constantia Cliff where I live. You read it, and, just hold on for me one sec. Mm -hmm. I think I've got a delivery or something. Sorry, Miran. It's okay. So yeah. that's how that's how that's how I see things. Even when you are buying your dream house, the minute you move yourself from being stuck with what suburb it is, how you 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 begin buying your house differently even the house that you call your dream house you start buying it and unless you've looked in that way and because she and I have had long conversations she she's my mentee who's finished the mentorship but she's become part of my network we discuss properties we we look at different things I showed her a high high end um multi-let in 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 Kayalami this woman has got a four bedroom farmhouse and she's got about five two, two bedroom cottages on this big, huge piece of land. It's in a very high end. It is worth millions. It's about seven million rent. It's valued at about seven million rent. It is surrounded by equestrian estates and whatever. Gorgeous, mm -hmm. gorgeous house. That's how she started seeing it. And that's the value of being mentored. And that's the value of coming to a mentorship where I can tell you the truth. Uh, you, you, you hang out with property investors. We, we tell the truth, right? The truth about property. And there's a property for everybody. It's fine, guys, if you love shiny things. I'm just saying assets will buy you that shiny house. Yeah. But how, how do you deal? Um, because I think some people, you know, you tap into property and then you end up just thinking this thing is not making me money and and yeah. you have you have and and maybe you bought wrong or like whatever the reason is and now you're just like i'm mm -hmm. i'm hearing dr miranda but yo my experience wasn't yeah. the best yeah you know i know like like what do you do what do you say to that person there's um there's, there's two ways of turning, turning it around with me. There are some properties, there are people, you know, you, you know, you know me, I, I, I talk about this all the time when we are drinking coffee, that there are people who get into property and they say they heard about property, but then they collect properties. They collect properties. So they are owners of multiple properties, but those properties do not yield money because yeah. they were bought wrong or brought it at the wrong suburb or they do not know how to turn it into money right yeah. so there are some properties that you absolutely have to let go of and how are you going to know and property that you absolutely have to let go of i think there's value in paying for either a master class 
or getting into a mentorship and commit yourself to a turnaround strategy. And there's no one, I will not sit with you for a turnaround strategy for free because it involves so many little pieces, for instance. So I can give you a consultation to say, this one it looks like it needs to go. Yeah, it's costing you money. Even if you were to get a tenant, it continues to sap your money. Let's get yeah. rid of this one. Let's put it on the market. This one can be turned around if you do the following. Because sometimes a property that you've owned for 10 years, 15 years, has got money sitting in it. It's got equity in it. Yeah. So sometimes instead of just spilling off, you can actually refinance that same property. Let's find it a, a tenant and let it wait out and sit there as long as it's got tenant. Let's let's extract some equity out of it so that you can buy a cash flow property this time, yeah. right? Yeah. And this one that we have, we have, we have refinanced. You can still sell it off. And that bond will still be paid because if you've paid anything for 15 years and it's sitting at the right place, that property has got equity. Someone will buy it. Say you bought it at 400,000. Right now it is worth 700,000. When we refinance, we refinance and just take out 200,000. The next person who buys it at 700,000, the bank will be paid anyway and you get out of the system, but you go and buy a cash flowing asset. And I'll show you what a cash flowing asset is because we will look for those properties. We will look how the cash is going to be done. We do a deal analysis and we have a property management plan because sometimes buying a property is not sometimes, buying a property is not enough. Property management is what collapses a property strategy. Yeah how you tenant, how you collect the rent, how you inspect, how you, how you fix it, how you, how you lease it out, and how you, you evict or not evict can collapse your portfolio totally. Yeah. I've seen it so many times. So, so sometimes a property is a, it's a no-go let's sell it off, it's a liability and it will continue to be a liability for the next 12 months. And that's how I evaluate that. Is it going to make us money? At what point? What can we do right now so that we get out of it without too many, too many scars? So you can turn around the properties that you have, leverage them by taking out equity out of them and buying cash flowing. And how you're going to do that is by committing yourself to a mentor, especially when you're traumatized. Because a mentor is not there about just the money, the conveyancing, the deal analysis. A mentor is there as well, just to hold your little hand step by step. I know you're traumatized. Take a breath. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're traumatized. I know you've had a bad tenant. One tenant must not turn away and flatten your whole portfolio. One tenant, you can have 20 tenants and have peace. Yeah. It's possible. Total peace. Mm -hmm. It's very, very possible to have total peace. There are people who have got buildings with 161 tenants and they have more peace than you with one of your townhouses. You know, so there's a po So property investing doesn't end with the buying. Property managing is the next step. And how you are going to finance is the next step. And how you're going to refinance is the next step. And not all of us are made to be property managers. Know your poison. Me, now I'm a student. I will not touch students on my own because I know the type of person I am. I'm, I can become 19 years old myself. They would give me a headache. It's not something I want to do. If you are not the person that must touch a property, be prepared to give up 8 to 10% of the rental income to a property managing company. Fight with the property managing company. Don't try to do it yourself. We don't know our poisons. That's, that's the other thing. So your mentor is there to show you how to buy right. Your mentor is there to show you how to finance right. Your mentor is, show, is there to show you how you property manage properly and for your personality yeah right? because I, yeah. and i love what you're saying because yeah. the personality part plays a huge role 
It does. And, and, and not all of us were meant to be no. landlords that are, are participating on a daily basis. On the daily basis, yeah. Because it, 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 it can drive you insane. It does. Literally. <laughs> and it does. And it does. And it does. And then I have got a mentee right now who is absolutely divine. I've never come across a personality like her. She's she's excited. We we don't have enough capital to 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 finance a property right now. But the strategy we've adopted is the rent to rent. She's gonna do an Airbnb. Her juices were flowing. The week I sent her out to go and do price comparisons of how she's going to furnish a bachelor flat, you must see the WhatsApp was flying like this. She's got a spreadsheet. This is how much something at Mr. Price Home, at Pep Home, and whatever. I never even knew that Pep Home exists, right? Yeah, there is. Mm. Her personality became a light because suddenly she remembered that she has owned an events company. She is a buyer to the core. Naturally, she is a person who loves beautiful things. She likes comparing a carpet here and a carpet there. It's something that I would never do, Min. Like, why? <laughs> why? Min, I'm not a shopper. <laughs> Min, you, if you give me Sentin City and a strip mall, I will choose a strip mall and everyone gets excited about Sentin City. I don't want to be enclosed in a mall. Yeah. I'm, I get all anxious about being in a mall. She was happy to do it. And when she came back and I was like, did you see how your personality became alive? Yeah, you wow. are that type of a person where now you should own a hundred Airbnbs because and that's your strategy. Basically. That's your spirit. You will beautify yeah. those places. And I told her about a hotel. There's a guy that we, we interviewed, an American who owns Day's house here in Johannesburg. And his hotel is a boutique little hotel. Each room ha- is themed into countries. He's got a Rwanda room, he's got a Zimbabwe room, he's got a Kenya room, and I don't know what else. I still haven't gone to the hotel. But I was like, can you see how excited you get? Your business will thrive when you are doing something that is that. So we don't fail because we failed. We failed because we didn't know, we didn't even know our own selves. I know that I don't know how to fix a toilet. I don't even want to fix a toilet right? I can fix a blocked urinary tract, uh, an infected one. Uh, I will know what to do with that. I'll give you antibiotics. But Uputja must go and fix the toilet. So what do I do? I give people Uputja's telephone number. Hmm? When a toilet in this house gets blocked, this is who you call. When the stove, the plate of the stove doesn't work, the electrician is. So we've got our own in-house maintenance mm-hmm. people. And I like them because they don't have call-out fees and they are just like, oh yeah, oh my God, I'm called at that house. Yaga prop doc mom. Oh my gosh, I had better be there. But Jabu will be there at 6 30. He will annoy you. He will wake up before you wake up, but he will be at the door to fix your toilet. So it's wow. personality. It is capital that can flop you. It is a rogue tenant, but a rogue tenant is one little person at a time. Really, you don't close shop just because of one tenant. Yeah. Yeah? Wow. So a turnaround strategy is there and a turnaround strategy requires commitment, just like you would commit to your business, any business. Yeah. And And run the real estate business as a business. Do not go yeah. and play around and say, I, me and my husband, we are dabbling. I, I don't know about this dabbling. <laughs> We're dabbling in, in property. Anyway, yeah. Wow. This, this has been mind-blowing. It's been quite an exciting yeah. nuggets that you've just yeah. thrown at us, literally. Yeah. So if there are three things that you want somebody to take out of this conversation, what are those? Only three. <laughs> Only three, because me and hour we can go on for another hour. Like, I know, mm-hmm. I know. Sorry, guys. I'm sure we were not meant to go on for this long. I've got three nuggets that yeah. I want to that I want to drop, and they 
you know, one of them will be about property. But like I said, Mpume, can we tell the truth in our families and about our careers and maybe tell the truth to our parents about how much we earn? And don't extend your salary with the credit card and call it part of your salary because it's not. Right? Yeah. Let's tell the truth. That's one. Now, number two nugget is for the professionals because, you know, I'm a busy professional, beginner, property investor, mentee, mentor. For the professionals, here's my nugget. Our professions are only but a business. They are not a wealth creator. If they yeah. do create wealth out of it, we are lucky. But let's see our, our business and then become investors, right? So use the MPCHB as a stepping stone to buy you real estate so that real estate is another business that's going to form a legacy and you form tangibles. And yeah. while you do that, please do estate planning protect the assets that you buy with a will, with a trust. Yeah. Because the next person is not thinking like you do. When I buy a property, the guardian of Neo, if God forbid I pass away, is not thinking the way I'm thinking. So please let's plan it so that even the guardians are guided to say, this is how I was going to navigate Neo's education right yeah. so let's not shy away that will must be written guys yeah my last one is about property i would say because we are busy professionals and for anyone else when you don't know how to do this an investment in education paying for a master class or coming to a mentorship and and finding your poison from day one will save you a lot of headaches. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I and I lo I love those. And so I'm big with mentorship. Yeah. And I'm big with learning from people who've walked the path. Walked. Yeah. So because I just think it's such a waste of time to try go figure things out yourself. Yo, like figuring out can cost you a lot. <laughs> Whereas there are people that have already paid school fees, it does. you know, it does. Who, who can literally just guide you through the process. And I remember when I was starting, when I was starting the co coaching conversation, I had a, a, a session with a coach yeah. and I, it was a coaching session, which I paid for, but I was clear. I said to her, yay, Busi, you've been doing this for a while. What tools are you using? How are people booking you? Like, like I went through, I had very specifics yeah. that, and then she was like, oh, these are the tools that I've used. Wada, 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 wada. Then we went into the detail of yeah. then the session, but I'm thinking she's walked the path. Yeah. She's done it for years. She seems successful where I'm sitting. She might, but in that success, there are learnings, you know, yeah. there are things where she can share and go. You know, I made a mistake by doing one. By two, doing this. I like that. I mean, that's where I'm at. We, uh, 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 my co-host and I went through, um, we, we, are, we are inside of a mentorship right now of a property stock fail. We prayed a property stock fail coach, just Lindy. Because of that, guys, Mina, I've always had a coach when I when I, when I, when I'm booming. I had a coach, didn't know call him a coach at the time while I was married. And but since then, I've had a coach in my life for over 15 years. I've I've, I've kept the same coach because sometimes I just want to bounce off an idea. Sometimes I'm going through a change of life. Sometimes I'm changing careers. Sometimes I'm launching freaking doctor. Doc mom, what are you doing? People are going to get confused. You are a doctor, but no property. What, what is that about? And when you bounce it off her, she sits back and she's like, and you were meant to be all of that. You are a speaker by nature. So speak. That's why you do a podcast. Yeah. You are a teacher by nature. So teach. 
right? That's why you mentor. So we, we are afraid of being all of those things. And unless someone has known you, and the reason why I keep a coach is some conversations, I can't have them with you because I'm, I'm a little embarrassed or I haven't ironed it through. And I'm not looking for a girlfriend talk, talk where you are going to say, oh, Miranda, what are you, what? I, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to a soundboard. I'm looking for a yeah. reflection mm -hmm. and someone to reflect it back to me to say, are you not going to confuse the market when you do that? Yeah. Okay, let's and, go and through. And, and, yeah. and, you're, and you're using somebody who's not all sentimental. Somebody who's exactly. going to question why you think it that exactly. way. And exactly. somebody who's going to give you a different perspective about exactly. so what if you looked at it from this perspective or yeah. somebody who's going to be frank with you and go like how have you gotten from this point to this point like <laughs> so that now you also start thinking it through yourself and then you answer yourself and you go like I've got somebody and I'll tell you this story I've got somebody that I haven't responded to a whatsapp yeah. I was asking her something to say, yeah. you know, there's this thing that I'm thinking, I'm debating whether to pay for it. Is it really worth it? And she asked me one or two questions. Like, do you think you need this? What value is this going to add in your life? And I answered myself, I haven't gone back to her to say, you, you know what, the penny dropped. Penny no, dropped. I just left it. I was like, you've answered me? You've you, answered you've it. I've answered that's, it. That's what my coach does. And she hits hard sometimes. And she 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 pushes back hard at me. And, and she will ask something like, how has that worked in your life before today? Were we not here in 2005? And it reminds you and it takes you back there. And you're like, okay. So I'm, I'm wanting to repeat the same mistake. Wakona, what, what's that about? Why? You understand? What is about? Why? What's that about? So it, it happens that way all the time. And I think people, Mira, some, some people, I don't know, I'm sure, I'm sure yourself and Busi have had this. People will write on your DM and say, too expensive. I don't even, you know, I don't worry about things like that. I don't, I honestly don't, don't worry myself when someone says, oh, but that's too expensive and whatever, because I believe that when you are ready, you will be ready and you will call on the mentor that you are supposed to go through or you will come back when you are ready and you understand the value. Right now, we are just having a conversation. I have, yeah. I have told you strategies and strategies because there are 15 of them. And even in one strategy, there can be three approaches of the same strategy. So there's yeah. no way of unpacking a mentorship on a telephone call or on a WhatsApp. Yeah. You can't yeah. suck me like that. Even people that I give free advice to, I give them and I know that law, I guess you implement. No, you know how and, I know. And that's, <laughs> and, and that's the trick, Miranda, the fact that I've, I've, I've given you very high level. That's what a yeah. strategy is about. It's yeah. very high level. Yeah. The, 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 the trick is in the detail of execution. Yeah. And if you don't understand the detail of execution, you're going to mess it up either way. You know what I mean? That's the thing. And, and, I, and I like thing. that. I like that. And, and I've, I said this to God. I said, bring me people that are ready to work on themselves. Okay. Somebody who's prepared to invest in themselves. And when I challenged them, they know that this is for their own benefit. Yeah. I was ngala and go, oh, but they're like, no. Why, why are you taking it personal? <laughs> you paid me. Uh, incidentally, incidentally, when I, was, when I was still married and I was going through this coach and I was getting relationship coaching, and <laughs> I used to ngala. <laughs> I would stand up and leave. <laughs> Because it's hitting home, Ungalanje, it's because it's hitting home and you yeah. don't want to deal. You're reflecting, and you don't want to deal know. with what you're doing. What was funny is he was so patient, this guy. He would write, we only had SMS at the time, and he would be like, eh, meh, 
your next session is on the 4th of October at this time. He will not address the, that banging of the door. <laughs> because, because you're a professional like that. And, and you know that that banging of the door was not about you. It was about no. the person not wanting to admit. Not wanting, what is going on. yeah. 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 So yeah. e-coaching and mentorship is so critical when, when I'm Pume. And sometimes you pay for a consultation. Sometimes I will have a serial of four consultations with my coach. Sometimes I just want one single consultation and I tell him, please don't give me one hour. I need two and a half hours of good time. And so so that I, I have, I have, and she will say, yeah, we'll get on to Zoom from eight to 10 o'clock at night or something like that. And we do that because my personal growth and my inner growth sometimes need somebody who, who, who's not worried about me being angry with them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I can cry and I can rent and rave. And because she knows my raves and she's like, yes, my darling, we will get back to that raving right now. I'm here. And I want yeah. you to write me an email and tell me what that is about. But I want to bring you here. Remember what I'm here about. Yeah. I'm not your friend. I'm not trying to have coffee with you. And we do have our coffees and lunches. But she's not trying to have coffee with me and we share makeup secrets and lipstick secrets. Yeah. She's not. Yeah. So sometimes we underrate mentorship in that way. And property mentorship tends to be like that. It's personal. It gets into your money story. Yeah, you yeah. and I know the story. It's hard. Yo, we, we know the story, and you know the we story. are walking the path. We are yeah. walking the path. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, thank you very much for for the time. I really appreciate it. I appreciate and, and these conversations, man. I love them. Thank you, <laughs> and 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 that's why I that's why I wanted them to be conversations. I didn't want like this yeah. formal interview. Okay. Thing. I just wanted us to have a conversation and see which direction it takes because no. that brings authenticity. And as we are talking through it, other things crop up. So if I give you a list of six questions mm -hmm. and other things come up, then what happens? You know what I mean? <laughs> like today, right? I know, honestly, these things I, I hadn't even planned on saying. Um, all I know is that I love property. It has created some sort of little freedoms for me and my daughter. And yeah. you know that it was inspired, the property business was inspired by the birth of Neo. And I'm refusing to have 16 hour work days where I don't see my daughter. Yeah. If this because, helps someone. And what you know is that the property is going to be generating revenue. You don't have to be at work. No. You know, and I no. think that's what's at the core of these conversations. We yeah. talk about and and we throw Ilanya mul multiple income streams, but the question becomes: so how? exactly what is it that you're doing? What is the how? how? Exactly. So, uh, so but you've given us some very uh, great ideas, and I really appreciate your time. So, where do people find you? I am Prop Dog Mom. I've got a Facebook page. Please join the Facebook page. Don't try to befriend me on Facebook. I've got the page for property uh, investing and property nuggets. Prop Dog Mom is my page. On Instagram, Dr. Miranda and, underscore Prop Dog Mom. And um, you will find me there. DM me. I answer all the time. I live in that space because it's a teaching space and it's my meeting space. And my telephone number for WhatsApp is 083-304-7332. 083-304-7332. Bume, thank you so much. Please say that again. We, 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 lost it. we lost you a bit there. Say the number again. 083-304-7332. That's my okay. WhatsApp number. 083-304-7332. 7332. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And whoever whoever WhatsApps you, please just say hello and tell the story. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> tell hello. This is Mbume. I need to talk to you about property about. mentorship. Hi, hi, and wait for me to come back and say hi. 
Then yeah, how are friends. you? And wait for me to come back and say I'm well. Hi, Bo. <laughs> anyway, hey. I. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're renting and raving now. Anyway, let's close this. For anybody who's been watching or hearing us, um, I'm so grateful to you, Miranda, for the time. And um, I hope anybody who's listened, they've really taken something out of this conversation. As I said, this is not about any financial advice. It's literally about our own experiences and us sharing some knowledge. And we hope you found value. Thank you. If you're following us, continue to do that. Share and really comment and give us some feedback. And we highly appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bube. Have a good day. Thank you, thank you.